Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show, where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. My name is Dr. Gleb Sapurski. I'm the CEO of Disaster Avoidance Experts, the future of work consultancy that sponsors the Wise Decision Maker Show. And today with me is Ton Williams, who's the CEO and founder of House of Anaya. Tell us a little bit about the House of Anaya and what it does, Ton. Yeah, so first of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to speak with you today. Um, House of Anaya is really set to curate wellness experiences for corporations and individuals. So what that means is that we don't have cookie cutter options um, for people. We actually co-create, we like to say co-create there and help them navigate their wellness journeys, whether it's in the mm. workspace or for the individual specifically. Now, I know that most employees don't even end up using their corporate wellness program, something like 80% of employees. Tell me a little bit more about what is the challenge? Why do employees not even use these programs? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that we see is that, you know, most employers are really well intended with these offerings, right? So wellness mm -hmm. is becoming more well known and they really are mm -hmm. well intended. However, it becomes one more thing that the employee now has to go figure out, navigate, and with wellness specifically, more so with inner alignment outside of, you know, physical fitness or just mm -hmm. nutrition, but that inward alignment really can become very mm -hmm. daunting. And it's not something that we have a lot of common language about, right, especially in the workplace. So when we have these offerings and we kind of put them out there, it's really great that we start there. But employees then would then have to go and look at what they want to do, research things that are good for them, mm -hmm. kind of have this trial and error. And so it begins to feel a little bit more like homework <laughs> or a mm. task instead of something that's good for them. So you can imagine as employees are working at a rate that tends to be 40, 50, sometimes we're seeing 60 mm -hmm. or, you know, hour work weeks. The last thing they want to do on a Saturday is try to find a, you know, a yoga class to go to mm. or spend lots and lots of time trying to do this thing. And then going back to see what their employer covers, what they have, what they mm -hmm. don't have. So it just becomes a task that's not easily implemented. And so this is why we mm. see a lot of corporations not getting a good ROI on their wellness programs. Now, wellness is a huge issue in a way, because if you look at the employee surveys, well-being is something that people are reporting that they really want, and they're suffering from mental health challenges, wellness challenges. Mm -hmm. So it seems like they would have be motivated to explore. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that they're find the hassle an obstacle, but there's clearly motivation. So what do you mm -hmm. say as a disconnect between that seemingly large motivation where people are saying that they really want well-being and wellness, but they're not pursuing these programs? Are they not getting the offerings that they want? Are there things that are going on besides the obstacles, the hassles that they have to, the hoops that they have to jump through to discover mm -hmm. the programming that they have available to them? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that, so it's the um, Workforce Institute at UKG that said that I think it's about managers can directly impact the me mental health of an employee more than a spouse or a doctor. So that mm -hmm. in and of itself means that that manager or a group of managers or leadership team directly influences whether these people may feel they are able to use these wellness offerings, that the language is there, that if they want to use mm. something like, I need a breath break, if that, you know, there's this stigma that goes along with it sometimes that mm. says, well, if I need this, it may appear that I'm weak or that I'm not mm. emotionally balanced or that I don't have everything together, which is something we're all as a collective trying to combat, right? Like we're all mm -hmm. human beings, we make mistakes, but sometimes there is immense pressure, especially as we move up the ladder to, appear or feel like we have everything all mm. together. So I think with those um, those offerings, it really does need to be weaved into the everyday language of the corporation. Mm. We use the term a lot, shifting it from an initiative to a core value. And when a company has a core value that surrounds or uses language around the benefits of wellness or transparency, communication, 
emotional balance in ways that are very tangible and easy for the employee to consume. Once it becomes common language for them, then they mm -hmm. tend to seek it out more because it's already in some ingrained in them and something that they can utilize freely within their workplace. So that's, I think, why mm -hmm. we're not seeing so much of the pickup. There's definitely options mm -hmm. there. There's growing options there. Um, we do things where we come into the workplace as well. So there's definitely some of it, mm -hmm. but I think it's adding that task of, do I even know what I need or I want? And what does this look mm -hmm. like? And if I share this with my peers, am I going to appear, right, that I don't have it together or that I'm mm -hmm. lacking in some area? So it's also fighting that mindset as well, I think. It sounds like there's a lack of psychological safety for employees mm -hmm. in talking about their potential challenges with wellness and they don't want to be stigmatized as being the weak ones. That's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that you're talking about how to address that. Now, I want to go to another element, which is we're seeing increasing amounts of people. Well, we've been seeing people working remotely. We're seeing increasing amounts of hybrid work. And that has a particular flavor to wellness because people are spending a lot more time working at home. And of course, they don't have access to some of the wellness that they would have if they're in the office. So what are your thoughts about the impact of hybrid work, remote work, which is still we have something like 25% of all work days for remote capable employees worked remotely. And it looks like it's pretty stabilized there. So that's going to be pretty much a permanent part of the workforce, it looks like going forward. So what are your thoughts on that uh, topic? How do we bring the wellness offerings to people who are working remotely part of the time in a hybrid modality or all the time in the remote modality? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think having offerings like group wellness sessions that are held virtually are a really great mm -hmm. way to be able to supply them with areas that they can or breaks where they can explore more of that. That's always a really great option. I love that. Having tools, um, sometimes apps mm -hmm. are really great. We're seeing a lot of this, right? A lot of uh, companies have apps that they supply to their employees, but really encouraging them to take the time throughout their day to even block off time to have that um, capability. So we're talking outside of the lunchtime. Lunchtime is a great, a great way for us to decompress. But as you may know, right, a lot of people that work from home tend to work the whole day through. Sometimes they mm -hmm. eat their lunch at their desk, right? They're right in front sure. of their computer. So there's lots of different uh, little things that they can do, set up reminders. Um, we had a team one time set up a reminder email. So every morning mm -hmm. at like 830, and every afternoon around 3.30, it would send off kind of like this little reminder that pushed to everyone's computer and said, take a breath break or something like this, which is a really great way to do it. Um, there are also tools online, and it depends on the IT supportage, right, um, within the company or the corporation. But there is also something where you can set off sort of like a really great bell. Um, it's one of our uh, instructors, he studied um, uh, with a, a monastery, and every hour they would have a bell that would ring, and that bell would be as a subconscious reminder for people to stop what they were doing and breathe and sort of come back to themselves. And so I also recommend this to our clients as well. It doesn't have to be every hour, but maybe it's something that has a really great uh, tone to it that says, okay, this is something that we need to be dropping our shoulders, right? Walking them mm. through that exercise, deep breath, a little bit of inward reflection, and then keep it moving, right? It doesn't have to be a 15 or 20 minute practice. Um, it can be something very simple, very easy, very quick, that they're then incorporating and encouraging their employees to do, whether they're at work or at home. And then this way, too, with things like this, small details like that can also carry through into the workplace. So if you have a chime right within the workplace that kind of sets off, mm -hmm. you're doing that twofold. You're creating a community where it says this is definitely acceptable. This is something that we mm -hmm. embrace and we also really love. And the second thing is giving people permission to stop what they're doing and then embrace that as well. So it's a really great way to practice and it's so simple. Um, it's just about implementing it and educating employees, but that's a great way to do it. So I found it interesting. I'm gonna to link to something that you were talking about before in terms of people being a little bit hesitant to acknowledge weaknesses, potential weaknesses, mental health issues. I've helped 24 companies transition to figuring out their hybrid work models. And one of the challenges I see is that managers 
are the ones who really need to be trained on how to do hybrid work effectively, remote work effectively. One of the elements of training is, of course, on wellness, how to help people be well when they're working in a hybrid modality and in a remote mm -hmm. modality, whichever ones mm -hmm. that we're dealing with. And so what you're talking about right now are company policies that are on the company-wide level, but how do we help the managers, the direct overseers of the rank and file employees who we're talking about here, those middle management personnel, how do we help them really care and invest into the wellness of their team members? Mm, that's a great question. So I think it really does depend on the group the manager, mm -hmm. their personal style and their personal gifts, right? So not mm -hmm. everybody has the same management style. That's nothing new, right? We all know that. Yeah. Everybody has their different management style. And so when they discover their management style, they can, can, can then role model and give people permission to do the same. So with leadership teams specifically, I always think it's really great to have a balanced approach. So number mm -hmm. one would be teaching them really great and easy tools that they can then repeat or role model fairly easily. So mm -hmm. that would be maybe a practice towards inward reflection. What mm -hmm. I really like to do there, if we're getting, like if I can give you a great example, would be sure. at the beginning of their day, kind of creating their list of things that they want to do, right? Or that they need to do. Mm -hmm. So we categorize it. What are the things that you need to do today? Some things are obviously more pressing and some things may or and may not be. Some would call this a priority list, but I love to set it as an intention for the day. So right. then taking a step back and saying, okay, maybe there's something I don't really like to do. Maybe there's something I'm really excited about. And maybe there's something a little bit in the middle. And I usually like to teach leaders to focus on the top three because after mm -hmm. three, it begins to feel very overwhelming. We feel mm -hmm. that tightness in our body. We become overwhelmed. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I have to do this in an eight hour day. I'm never gonna go to bed. And then dialogue starts to spin out of control, mm -hmm. right? But what I like to teach leaders is if you can get down to the three, the love, the maybe I'm just okay with and the thing I don't really wanna do, um, that reflection will help them also get to learn their habits on the things and the projects that they become excited about, right? Mm -hmm. So that inward reflection says, oh, okay, so I have a project I'm really excited about. Why am I excited about these themed projects, right? So inward reflection is a big one. Um, helping them understand their gifts by way of those things that they're excited about, their weaknesses by the way of the things that they're not so excited about, and the way that they can leverage their teams and discover their gifts to kind of balance out the things that they don't really feel excited about, right? So that's mm -hmm. a great way for a leader to say, who am I in this space? And how am I then calling that out or pulling that out of my employees so that we can then transfer some of this energy, if you will, <laughs> um, into creating a cohesive environment. So that would be one way to be mm -hmm. a, a, a very tactical way of uh, wellness and balance. The other way is to get into an exercise that um, only takes about five minutes to implement. So mm -hmm. this is something also that would include, I love to use breath work because breath work is so mm -hmm. easy. You can do it walking from one building to another. You can do it to go to the kitchen, whatever it is that you need to do. Breath work is a fantastic one. Another great one is mindfulness mm -hmm. because we don't have to speak too much out loud, but catching the way that we think also helps us incorporate the way that we speak. And speaking to our peers and our employees directly reflect and also um, mirror back to us the energy that we're giving out. So mm -hmm. what I mean by that is when we feel really good about who we are, obviously mm -hmm. we use words that reflect that, right? And when an employee mm -hmm. or a peer feels that energy from you, they then feel like they want to mirror it back to you. Right. So this subtle way of exchanging these words, being mindful of what we're thinking about, what we're saying is also really a form of wellness because we're transferring that energy. And so that's a really great one, too. There's there's lots of little things that you can do. But I think for me, the biggest one is short and easy tools that can be implemented under five minutes that are easy to role model and a really great daily reflection exercise that says, who am I in this space and how am I going to impact this day? Interesting. I will have to think about in integrating some of these wellness techniques into my training mm -hmm. for managers. As we yeah. finish up, what are your thoughts about the future of corporate wellness programs? What's your vision? 
So for me, I would love to see a lot of these corporate wellness programs integrated into the company culture, right? So a lot of the words um, that we use sometimes is about inclusivity, right? Understanding who people are. And the number one question I get asked a lot of times is, how do people then begin this process, right? So if you have a company that has been um, uh, going on for 50, 60 years, Sometimes they feel like they can't reverse the culture. And I really love that it is super simple to kind of turn that culture around into one that embraces wellness as a whole well-being element to their corporate offerings. And so for me, what excites me most is seeing leaders and seeing more and more leaders really looking to wellness activities, mind, body, and spirit alignment, right? And then being aware of who they are and what their future looks like so that they can uh, give permission for other people to live right out fully what they love. And the other thing I really love that I'm seeing in terms of trends is that we do uh, retreats as well. And so we're seeing mm -hmm. leadership and corporate teams go through wellness retreats together. And that is so powerful. It's extremely impactful. And that means that the future state of corporate wellness is going to move truly from that initiative to a core value. And I think we're going to see more and more of that pop up. So that really excites me. Um, when I started this company, it was mm -hmm. like, you know, nobody was like, uh, corporate wellness, Ton, what are you talking mm. about? Who's going to want to talk to you about that, right? Mm. And now we're seeing more and more of it. So it just makes my heart so happy that we are seeing an upward trend in that. And that means mm. that employees are now feeling seen, heard, and valued at work. And that's my ultimate goal for, did we shift really the way that corporate uh, culture looks like? That's my vision for the future. So I'm hoping it becomes uh more balanced, more emotionally uh, available and friendly and transparent and leaders who truly care about their people from the inside out, so. Excellent, thank you, that's a great vision. And if people want to learn more about you and your vision, where should they go? Sure, they can find us at www.anayawell.com. Excellent, well, thank you very much, Tom. That was very helpful. Awesome, thank you so much. And thank you to the audience for checking out another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. Please make sure to subscribe wherever you checked out the show and leave a review. It helps others discover the show and it helps us improve the show. All right, everyone. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. In the meantime, the wisest and most profitable decisions to you, my friends. <laughs>